and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to use logistic regression in Excel to predict if a prospect will buy. Logistic regression is used to predict the probability of an event occurring, such as your prospect's purchase of your product. And logistic regression analyzes what we call binary output data. Output variable y represents the event's occurrence when y equals 1, or non-occurrence when y equals 0. And sometimes you refer to y as a dummy output variable. Logistic regression determines the equation that most accurately calculates the probability of events y occurring, such as your prospects purchasing of your product. So let's take a look at what we have here. We can see the input data that we're going to base our analysis on. Y is the response, whether or not the prospect purchased. Zero, they did not purchase. And one, they purchased and the age of each prospect and the gender. One is male and zero is female. And we, can, we drew a dividing line between the purchasers and non-purchasers. We can kind of see right around age 45, males start purchasing. So let's change the input variables and see how accurate our equation is. So we change the age from a 43 to a 44-year-old man. Probability jumps up 36%. From 44 to 45, we can see the probability is increasing as the male age increases. And that matches the data pretty well. From a 46-year-old man to a 47-year-old man, probability jumps up to 69%. So that, that does seem to match the data pretty well. It looks like we have gotten the right probability equation here. What about a 48-year-old man? What if you change that to a 30-year-old woman? Well, we can see the probabilities drop down to just about 0% for a 30-year-old woman. That seems to match the data pretty well. So it looks like our we've solved properly for constant A and B. So we're solving for the logit, and that the logit L equals constant plus A times H plus B times gender, so we have to solve for the constant A and the B to get the logit. We can see that right there. And there's the logit L, and uh, we can see the constant A and B that we've solved for, and we'll show you how to do that. And here's the probability equation. You see that L, B gets taken to the L power, and that's the probability. And what we're trying to do is we're using solver to solve this. And we'll show you how to do that. We're going to use the Excel solver to find the combination of the constant A and B that maximizes the sum of the very last column on that page. We'll show you how that works. This column right here we're maximizing. We're maximizing that cell right there. Now each of these equations right here is maximized, is most closely to one, when the probability equation is most accurate. When the probability most accurately uh, predicts when y will be 0 or 1. So let's derive this first. We'll take a derivation of this right now. So we can see, once again, we're, we're calculating the probability of x, of that event occurring. x equals the event that y equals 1. So probability of x equals the probability that y equals 1. The odds of x occurring are probability of x over the probability of no x, 1 minus p of x. The logit, we've already said the logit equals constant plus a times h plus b times gender. Also, the logic equals the natural log of the odds of x. Natural log of p of x over the quantity of 1 minus p of x. Okay? So if we bring that equation down, the natural log equation there, so once again, logic equals the natural log of the quantity of p of x over 1 minus p of x. And if we take everything, we take e to the power of each item on each side of that equal sign. We have e to the L equals simply the odds of x, p of x over 1 minus p of x. And if we run that through this algebraic manipulation right here, we can see that is equivalent to the probability of x equals e to the L over the probability of 1 plus e to the L. And if you remember the equation in the very last line that we were, look, we were maximizing with the Excel solver, that equation is maximized when the probability equation is mo most accurate. In other words, when y equals 1, the probability of y, p of x, approaches 1. 100% 1 chance that y equals 1. And when y equals 0, that also approaches 0. So right here, this, these equations are maximized when the, this probability is maximized. So once again, what we're doing is we're taking this probability equation, and we're finding the, the constant, the a and the b, which will maximize the sum of this final column. And if we've done that, then we have 
found our correct answer for the probability equation. So let's, let's do this in Excel. So first of all, let's do the inputs of each of these equations. The probability equation that we're trying to find. So the inputs of that are simply e to the l. You can see that that is just e to the l. And then the input of e to the l is simply the l, the logit that we've calculated, and e. We've set e to be 2.71828. And l, where we solved for constant and a and b with the Excel solver. We'll show you how to do that. And the inputs of the logit are constant a and b plus the user inputs, age and gender, just like that. So we can see our inputs are, are correct for this. Now let's take a look at each one of these individual scenarios that we derive from each prospect. The logic, once again, is the, from the age and the gender and the constant a and b that we've solved for with the solver, and we'll show you how to do that. E to the L is derived from logit e to the L, right there, just e and L. And the probability equation, well, there's only e to the L, so that's the only input for that equation right there. And our final equation, which is maximized when the probability equation is most accurate, you can see the inputs for there are simply just y right there and the probability equation. There are only two inputs for that last and final equation. And we're going to sum every entry in that column up, and we're going to maximize that. Now remember that uh, this equation is maximized when the probability equation is most accurate. When y equals 1 and that probability equation predicts 100% chance of that happening, and when y equals 0, the probability equation predicts 0% zero chance, zero chance of that happening. So when the sum of this column is maximized, we've come as close as possible to creating the most accurate probability equation. Now we're going to use the solver to do that. So we're going to show here how to use the Excel solver to find the constant A and B that maximizes the sum of the last column so that the resulting probability equation is most accurate. We're maximizing that last, the sum right there. So let's do that. Solver, let's do that. We're setting a target cell, and that is the target cell that we're setting right there, maximizing that cell. You can see we're maximizing it by changing these cells. And in solver, this is called, these are called the decision variables. So we select each one of those, put a comma next to it, then select the next one, and the next one. We're changing those to maximize that sum. That's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and hit solver right now, see what happens. It looks like we encountered a problem, okay? When you're messing around with the solver, sometimes you have to add constraints in there. And I, I played around with it until I found the, the set of constraints that most accurately uh, makes that equation work, gives it the, makes the sum as much as possible. Let's do it again and put the constraint in there that I figured out from playing around with it. Okay, so let's do the whole thing over again, setting the target cell once again. We're maximizing the sum of, sum of that column. And then by changing those decision variable cells, same ones as before, the constant, comma, A, comma, B. Okay, now we're going to add a constraint. I found this constraint out by playing around with this. That's what you have to do too, but add a constraint. I know that if I make sure that that constant does not get lower than negative 25, then that constraint will provide the maximum sum of that column. So I'm putting that in there right now. Constraint is greater than or equal to negative 25. Now if I go and hit solve, I'll get the right answer for this equation. Solve. Looks like Excel has done the right thing. And we scroll down, we see that is the maximum answer you can get for that column. And that answer does make sense. So we've used the Excel solver to find the constant, the A and the B, which maximize the sum of those, uh, sum of that column, which means that our probability equation is correct with that constant A and B. So if you'd like to become an Excel statistical master, check out www.excelmasterseries.com, and you can pick up this free graphing manual. It's 100 pages of creating interactive graphs in Excel of the most popular graphs in statistics. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.